The Quest 2 is a very versatile device. We've already established this in multiple previous videos, but a few videos ago I showed you guys some of the really cool 2D apps that you could be running on your Quest. Things that included Steam Link, allowing you to play Steam games on a massive display right there in front of you, and other apps that allowed you to emulate older consoles on your Quest. But what if you don't necessarily want to emulate older consoles? What if you'd prefer to be playing newer console titles right from your Quest? Well, today we're going to be trying to play the PlayStation 4, which is under my desk and most of you probably didn't even know it existed, kind of because I forgot it existed, without a display. Say someone else in your house is using the living room TV, or you just want to be playing your PlayStation 4, or possibly even PS5, on a massive display in front of you. Can you do it on the quest? Well, I'm mystical, and that is exactly what we'll be trying out today. Let's jump right in. So, because the Quest is an Android device, and I already talked about this, you guys don't need to hear it again and again every single video. If you want to know how to install Android apps on the Quest, the video is right up here. The app that we will require for today's one is called Remote Play. It's an app made by Sony, allowing you to use an Android phone in order to play your PlayStation on an Android device. Why exactly you'd want to do that, I'm not certain. I don't see why you'd want to play the PlayStation 4 on a tiny screen. But now that we've got these devices, we can absolutely change that around. And instead of playing it on a tiny screen, we should be able to play it on a massive display, possibly larger than your living room TV. So let's sideload the app through SideQuest and see exactly what happens when we do. So if it's your first time launching PS Remote Play, all you do is you find it down here, you go to Unknown Sources, and then you find PS Remote Play. Then the app will ask you to sign in. However, I've noticed you might encounter a problem when trying to do so without a third-party browser. When I actually wanted to sign in to the Remote Play app, I couldn't. On the Quest Pro, for some reason, I couldn't sign in using the Oculus browser. So what I did is I downloaded the Firefox browser, set the Firefox browser as default inside its settings, and then I was able to sign in without any issues whatsoever. So in case you're running into issues, signing into the remote play app, that's hopefully how you can fix them. Then you will want to jump into other connections if this isn't your first time launching it. If it is your first time launching it, this is what you will see. You click on the console you want to use and you type in the code that it is asking you to use. I'm already connected right now, but now I need to connect this controller. To connect your PS4 controller, you hold the PlayStation button and the share button. Then you go into settings, devices, pair, and now you click pair. There we go. Nice large window for PS remote play. Kind of seems more like I'm in a cinema more than anything else and now I can connect to the PS4 with my controller connected directly to the Quest. So here is my PlayStation 4. This thing hasn't been used in a very long time. I know it looks like a war zone down here. Ignore that. This is the charging station. It doesn't need to look pretty. I actually got this one for free from a friend who had already gotten a PlayStation 5. The PS4 was broken, wouldn't turn on, and even when it did, it overheated in just a few minutes and shut down. I was told that if I managed to fix it, I can keep it, and I'm pretty sure I put an SSD inside here. But let's just make sure. And apparently the SSD is gone. I have absolutely no idea where it went, but I'm pretty sure it used to be here. Unfortunately, this does mean we've got no hard drive to run our games on. So let me just find a random hard drive, slap it in in there and reinstall the system. Okay, now that we've got the system reinstalled on our PlayStation 4, let's jump in to some quality gameplay. So I've got the PS4 controller connected to my headset with a wire because Bluetooth was causing some weird latency between the PS4 controller and the headset. But here we go, let's jump into some Rocket League on a massive display right there in front of us and see how it goes. Look how flimsy these triggers are. I don't think we're gonna play anything on this. Okay, so I am terrible at this game. I probably won't uh, force you to sit through the torture of actually watching me play this. There we go. The underscore mystical. I think mystical was taken. Okay, well, there you go. We somehow won. This controller is very broken. Any delay that I am uh, currently noticing, I'm going to say is probably due to this controller. Because, I mean, uh, I, I don't actually know what's, what's happening here, but that... That shouldn't be like that, I don't think. Also, the Bluetooth in it apparently doesn't work. And again, I've used the PS4 controller with the Quest Pro before, so I know it should work. Point being, this actually works. And if you look at this, the display is actually rather nice. And I mean, we can make it even larger, which I can't even see sitting this close up to it. You get my point. With the PS4, this is working 
beautifully. Well, except for the minor input lag that I'm going to put off to this specific controller. As you can see there, the PlayStation 4 worked. We were able to play our games on a massive display right there in front of us. And the Quest Pro brought that up to a whole new level as I was able to see the screen with the environment around me in color, basically giving me a full AR display right there in front of me to play my games on. However, a lot of you are going to want to know how this works on a PlayStation 5, or does it work on a PlayStation 5? And many of you might know, I don't have a PlayStation 5. So I broke into a house in order to use their PlayStation 5. So jumping into the PlayStation 5 gameplay, the only issue I ran into here was the fact that I couldn't use a PlayStation 5 controller. Because for whatever reason, the Remote Play app doesn't actually support the PS5 controller until Android 12, or at least so I read on Reddit. So we had to go ahead and find a PlayStation 4 controller. But once we had the PlayStation 4 controller connected to the Quest Pro, we were able to play using Remote Play on the PlayStation 5 no problem. Of course, missing out on the whole PlayStation 5 experience as we don't have adaptive triggers and we don't have the whole new controller experience, which is unfortunate, but hopefully when the Quest Pro gets updated to Android 12, we will be able to use that PlayStation 5 controller. Other than that, the gameplay was fantastic. It was as smooth as ever. There was no input lag, which was incredible. That's what you want over wireless gaming, and it's usually the biggest problem people have with wireless gaming. Is there going to be input lag? How much input lag is there going to be? And both with the audio and with the controller, I could notice no noticeable latency. In fact, with the TV going over me in the background, I couldn't hear a difference between the Quest and that there was no reverb whatsoever, which is great. It showed me that the latency was basically not there. Other than that, the gameplay was just fantastic. Seeing the PlayStation 5 graphics on such a massive display just brings it up to a whole new level. Again, me being able to see it in pass-through using the Quest Pro is just a completely different level of gaming. And I cannot wait to be able to connect to more systems using tech like this. In fact, the Xbox Cloud Gaming app can also be run on the Quest. Who knows, we might turn that into a video of its own. But hopefully, this video can help some of you guys out. Again, maybe somebody else wants to be using the TV at the same time as you want to be gaming. Or maybe you just have a quest laying around and want to have a massive display while playing your PS5 or PS4. Well, you have the ability to do so. If you guys like this one, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too, but let me know why down below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord and check out our Reddit down below. I want to see you posting your spicy memes on there. Those lovely names going off to my right right now, those guys are my Patreons. Thank you so, so much for all the support right now, guys. You are helping me out so much. Honestly, I cannot tell you how much your support means to me, so thank you so much for that. And as usual, if you want to be notified about your content coming up on the channel daily, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace. And for those of you that didn't understand that, this is my uncle's, and I'm minding his house for the week, so I get to play around with it. No PS5 VR, unfortunately, though.